Tegan Knox is back in WWE with an interesting hair. Ruby Stone is back in AEW also with new hair. Damage Control Power Bounce Becky Lynch through the table. Alexa Bliss picks up a surprise victory in Raw main event. Jordan Grace challenged to retire Mickey James and Athena is full on menace and I love it. Welcome everyone to Ring Bell, this is DS and this is Women's Wrestling Weekly. So, I just won an Emmy. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I just won an Emmy for my documentary on Emmett Till on NBC, so I'm very, very excited for that, very proud of it. And I totally missed the ceremony to interview Candice Michelle in Wisconsin this weekend. Yeah, I sometimes ponder my life choices too, but at the end of the day, that's how much I love Ring the Bell, and you know, sometimes this is what I do to get these content for you guys, you know? So please send me some love by subscribing and hitting that notification button. Thank you, thank you. Let's jump to WWE Raw. So we have two triple threat matches among all former champions where the winners of each matches will clash next week for number one contendership against Bianca Belair's Raw Women's Championship. First match was Asuka versus Rhea Ripley versus Bayley, and before this match, Becky Lynch, the man, interrupts Bayley's entrance coming out from the crowd which is so cool, and she said it's been over three years since her and Bailey had a one-on-one -on -one match, and that they've been missing each other while they were both out. She then effectively puts over Bailey, bringing up her heydays, being the double champion with <clears throat> Sasha Banks, and she also reminds everyone that Io and Dakota are champions. Right? We all remember that, right? After this interaction, I am dying to see this match between the two. And after Becky leaves Bailey, she then has a face-off with Rhea Ripley, and damn, this one looks good too. I'm salivating over all these potential Becky Lynch matches, and this triple threat match was everything. Rhea Ripley dominates with her power, Bayley played an excellent character, forming multiple short-lived alliances throughout the match, the Eradicator. and Asuka of course was just amazing. The match heated up nicely by the end where they exchange finisher after finisher, Rhea then takes herself out of the match by missing a sentence out of the ring, then Bayley and Asuka had really hit it back and forth until Bayley hits a rose plant for the win. Yeah, it was a spectacular match, and post-match angry Rhea Ripley hits a huge riptide on Asuka. I mean, I'd be pissed, like, did we all forget Forget that Rhea was a number one contender for Bianca like months ago. Either way, super satisfied. Then main event we had Alexa Bliss versus Nikki Cross versus Becky Lynch looking damn sexy by the way. I love this the man and big time fusion. This is really doing it for me. Nikki Cross starts out this match all freaking crazy and both Becky and Alexa takes her out of the ring. Alexa then almost hits sister Abigail teasing yet another Bray Wyatt reunion. We then had a couple cool spots here where Alexa takes out both Becky and Nikki outside the ring, and of course mandatory Tower of Doom spot, and top rope leg drop and neck breaker combo on Bliss which was really cool. Then we have damage control interference where they power bombed Becky Lynch through the already cleaned up announcer table, taking her out of this match. And then Alexa Bliss hits Twisted Bliss to pick up the win. This was a really fun match. I'd say I prefer the first triple threat match both because the first one had a clean finish and it was a lot more intense than this one, but Alexa Bliss winning was something that I did not expect. And we've seen Bianca versus Bailey for like 100 times time at this point, so I'm here for Bianca Belair versus Alexa Bliss match at Rumble. That would be a really fresh match. Now, Bailey and Alexa had some terrible matches back in the day, so hoping, fingers crossed, for some redemption next week, and I'm really curious how Becky will be building her feud against Damage Control heading into Royal Rumble. I'm very satisfied. We also saw Royal Women's Champion Bianca Belair interview backstage, where she basically says she was ready for whoever and whatever. By the way, she, I think she was recently in a bodybuilding contest. She looked damn good. We also saw Candice LeRae backstage interview, where we learned that she'll be facing EO Sky next week. So Candice and Dakota match last week was such a banger, like almost feel like it saved Dakota Kai. Made her look like million bucks. We all know that EO versus Candice Ray on TakeOver was one of the best women's match in WWE history. So those two will freaking tear it apart next week. I love that Candice Ray is the one doing damage control for damage control, delivering all these classics. So I'm very, very thankful for Candice. By the way, Nikki Cross was hiding in the back just watching Candice doing this interview. I wonder if she's trying to join the Way replacing Indy, or is Indy coming to the main roster, or I don't know what's going on, but it was both cute and creepy. And our beloved Tamina and Dana Brooke were on TV, thanks to JBL's poker invitational segment, very different from the other strip poker segment that we had back in the days. I love Dana and Tamina, they steal some poker chips at the end for some reason. I actually don't even know what Tamina took, she like took whatever was on the table. I gotta ask you, does size matter? Many say yes. I used to prefer boyfriend size, but now... 
Mm-mm. I want the biggest in town. And no, I'm not talking about that because this video is brought to you by America's largest injury law firm, Morgan & Morgan. Because when you're injured, you deserve compensation. With over 800 lawyers across America and 4,000 support staff available 24-7 to handle your case, Morgan fights to get their clients the best result. And they have recovered more than $13 billion for hundreds of thousands of clients. Because there is no such thing as an accident. If you're injured, it's due to negligence, whether it's negligent product, person, or or place. You shouldn't have to deal with an injury, you deserve compensation. The best part though, you pay nothing up front for their service. The fee is free unless they win. And unlike Ronda Rousey who don't give a damn about reputation, having a reputation for winning is everything for Morgan & Morgan. Their lawyers are like bulldog and they fight for massive settlements so insurance companies tend to settle quickly and for more. More likely to get you that chingle chingle. Getting started is easy, just dial pound law LAW from your cell phone or visit for the people com slash ring the bell. Thank you Morgan and Morgan. Let's jump to WWE NXT. So we had two singles matches to help WWE Hall of Famers figure out who the participant of the Iron Survivor Challenge for NXT deadline. So first we saw Roxanne Perez versus Indy Hartwell, the queen of basics. Surprisingly long nine minute match. Remember, they did kind of build this mini feud between them for weeks now. So they could have totally had more than just a throwaway singles match. And it was a good match, but just not very memorable. At the end, Indy nails a huge boot almost stomping on Roxanne, but Roxanne ultimately hits her pop rocks to pick up the win. And it was super cute when Roxanne struggled to get on top of Indy's Aww. back, so she had to jump again. Indy's tall! This was a pretty fun match. Uh, good? Not bad! Next we got Kiana James versus Fallon Henley, another two that built their feud for weeks now. This is a very competitive match between the two, but at the end, Kiana runs out of the ring and throws her ugly big bag to Fallon for a distraction, throws her into the ring post, and finishes her off with their finisher for 401k. <laughs> Love this name of the finisher. I really like that Kiana is incorporating her smart gimmick, which is always really tough to translate in the ring into her matches like this. I enjoyed this match a lot. Very satisfying. For the main event, we had six women tag match Nikita Lyons and NXT Women's Tag Champions Kaden Carter and Katana Chance versus Toxic Attraction. And before this match starts, Zoe Stark jumps Nikita from behind and takes out her leg. And I kind of live for this because Nikita's entrance is already kind of goofy. <laughs> so it was funny to see her get attacked during her What's up? pose. And Toxic Attraction at Gorilla just laughing at this whole mess was just amazing. <laughs> and this match restarts later in the show, Nikita with the injured leg. This was a really action-packed match. Katana and Kaden are truly tag champions working in total unison. And the fact that they continue to evolve coming up with more and more tag moves every match gets a standing ovation for me, even though I'm totally setting down. <laughs> toxic Attraction, of course, was deliciously heelish in this match. And by the end, Nikita Lyons tags in and hits her huge leg split finisher on JC for a pin. But Gigi breaks it and Brawl starts outside where Mandy lands a deadly knee on Katana and Nikita then tries to spin kick Mandy but her knees give out. She's doing it. Yeah, fix it. Which is... <laughs> kind of funny. It was weird! And then Toxic Attraction finishes Nikita off with their finisher, high and low for the win in 9 minutes. Really, really fun match and Nikita looked really great. I, I gotta say, Nikita obviously has tons of charisma and she's got impact in her moves, just that injury selling was quite questionable. Quite a choice. Post match, Zoe Starks looks down from the platform smiling and happy about everything. This was a fun match, I'm stratified. Lyra Valkyria, previously known as Aoife Valkyrie of NXT UK, is coming to NXT. I think it's a good name change. Definitely Definitely more accessible given that WWE is a global brand. And if you haven't watched NXT UK, she's a really cool one with an awesome jumping leg drop finisher, so she'll be a treat. And then Electra Lopez interview reveals that she's looking to defeat Indy Hartwell because for some reason NXT fans love Indy, so Electra will make name for herself defeating her. Poor Alba Fire losing to Mandy Rose for like 38th time. She's gonna unleash her anger on Isla Dawn, the unholy enchantress, because she blew her chance of winning that title. Good luck with that. At least she's done with Mandy for now. Finally. We also saw a Sundra, Blaze, and Molly Holly with other WWE Hall of Famers choosing women's Iron Survivor Challenge participants. The comments made by Hall of Famers here were surprisingly real. Like, damn. And it was later announced that we have Zoe Starks, Cora Jade, Roxanne Perez, Kiana James, and one surprise participant confirmed for the match. Who should the surprise be? My pick is returning Tiffany Stratton. AEW Dynamite time, Jamie Hayter and Britt Baker storyline continues as Britt continues to be annoying as f**k. 
can't stop herself from effortlessly overshadow and talk over the champion Jamie Hayter. And Jamie Hayter here tells Tony Schiavone that she will be having her own sit-down interview next week on Dynamite, just like Soraya this week on Rampage. I fully expect another shenanigan of Burt Baker talking all over Jamie. I truly love this storyline. It's so perfect for Burt Baker. We then see Anna Jay versus Willow Nightingale. Willow's always a blast to see in the ring, and Anna Jay gets to dominate Willow for the most of the match. She hits a gory bomb on Willow and sleeper hold locked, but Willow escapes. She then knocks out interfering Ty Mello, nails Anna Jay with a huge clothesline, and plants her with the Dr. Bomb for the win in 7 minutes. Willow getting a win from established star like Anna Jay seems like a really good sign for her future in AEW. Anna in this match though seemed a little more like she was dancing than wrestling. Her intensity in the ring comes and goes, but this match particularly seemed more like she was going through the motion than making us believe that she was here to take down Willow. You know, Post-match, Ruby Soho with the green hair this time returns to attack Ty from her back. She pummels Ty and then punches Anna Jay. Then Ty runs up to punch Ruby, but she falls down for some reason. <laughs> I, I don't even know what happened. Ruby then hits her finisher, Destination Unknown and Ty, on the ramp, saying that the bitch is back. And I love that shot of this one lady just politely clapping. Yeah, hope 2023 will be better year for Ruby. The match was fine, but I'll say stratified for Ruby's return and for good luck on sending her. And Jade Cargill had TBS Championship Celebration where she looked rich, she looked extravagant, she looked beautiful, she looked like she owned the place. She then addressed Kiara Hogan being kicked out of the baddies last week. And from there, she basically just spits facts about how she's the megastar of AEW, how she's the draw. Then there's some type of feud going on with Bow Wow, who's a rapper. I honestly don't know what's going on here, um, but hey, I am here for a celebrity intergender match if that's what they're going for. I'm here for that. Either way, Jade is money. Impact Wrestling Time, we saw a huge main event match. Mickey James versus Deanna Peraza for Mickey's last rodeo, potentially career ending situation. This match was set up as Deanna confronted Mickey at Overdrive after she beat Taylor Wilde and told her that if anyone deserves to end Mickey's career, it's the Virtuosa. This was a terrific 16 minute banger of a match. By the end of the match, Mickey nails Deanna with the missile dropkick, and Deanna then evades to Mickey DT, nails her with the pump kick. Mickey then reverses Deanna's Queen's Gambit with a mid kick, but Deanna kicks out. Deanna locks in Venus de Milo, but Mickey barely escapes. Then Deanna rolls Mickey up with the hands full of tight, but Mickey rolls Deanna up again, grabs Deanna's tights for the three count victory. Some people are saying that this is Mickey's heel turn tease, but I really don't think so. It's just veteran Mickey James turning the tables on Deanna and outsmarting her, which is, if you think about it, it's great for Deanna because it lets Deanna stay strong even though she lost to Mickey here. Brilliant booking. Post-match, as Mickey celebrates Knockouts World Champion Jordan Grace enters the ring and challenges Mickey James for a match at Hard to Kill. And while this interaction could be all like, oh, I respect you, I love you Mickey James, no. Jordan Grace does not f around and she lets Mickey know that she's retiring Mickey James. Jordan's just been so good in and out of the ring, it's amazing. And we all knew that this was a direction this last rodeo was heading towards, but I was not expecting to go here so soon. It will be a terrific match, but this means the end of Last Rodeo could be closer than we thought, which makes me really, really sad. This match, an entire post-match segment was wonderful and very stressful. We also saw some backstage friction between Savannah Evans and Tasha Steeles as they blame each other for the loss at Overdrive. Tasha then tells Savannah that she'll be watching next week for a match against Taya Valkyrie. AEW Rampage, we see the sit-down interview between Soraya and Renee Paquette. Soraya discusses having her first match in five years in full gear and says she's coming for that AEW Women's Championship, throwing her name in the basket. I love to eventually see Jamie Hayter versus Soraya match, but I'd actually prefer if Soraya gets a couple big matches against some of the veterans like Mercedes Martinez, Athena, or Serena Deep to warm up before heading into this big championship program. Cause one, she can elevate any non-title fuse cause she's the motherfucking Soraya. But two, I think it will let her ease back into the mix, letting her be in the peak condition when she gets to the championship match. Let alone Jamie Hayter is cooking something out with Britt Baker right now, so she won't be losing the title anytime soon. And then we see a singles match Athena go against Danny Moe in a squash match where Athena just demolishes her opponent. After quickly picking up the win, she continues the attack throws her outside of the ring and finishes her with brutal kick to the stairs. Let's be one hundy for a second. Let me keep it one hundy with you. It's like my constipation has ended. Thank God Athena is healed and I'm living for it. This is Fallen Goddess. This is the merciless assassins that we all wanted, all needed from Athena and Ember Moon too this whole time. I think just her attitude is different too. Like her confidence is just 
radiating. I actually got to meet her at WrestleCade. No interview because they need that AWPR permission and everything. But she talked about how she worked all of you. Talking about that, oh my god, Athena was so unsafe during that one dark match. She knew exactly what she was doing. And this new lethal heel Athena is going to be everything on AEW. I'm so here for it. Stratify. I'm so excited for the ROA Women's Championship match against Mercedes Martinez. That's going to be a banger. WWE SmackDown time. We first have Shayna Baszler versus Emma singles match. So before this match, Madcap approaches Emma at Gorilla and tells her that she's a trailblazer for women's evolution and revolution. That she's Emma. You gotta know who she is. And she belongs in WWE. And Emma then kisses Madcap on his cheek. I, I don't know. And I also kind of hate that she's a baby face but comes out to it's all about me theme song. This match just happened. It was four minutes long. It was just there. Didn't make Emma look particularly strong or sympathetic. Didn't make Shayna look menacing. You know, Madcap probably should have told Emma to step the fuck up because this was just, yeah, it was just a match. At the end, Shayna throws Emma off from the top rope and locks in Kira for the clutch to tap Emma out and post-match continues her attack on Emma. And then she attacks Shotzi who comes out for Emma's aid and cues returning Raquel Rodriguez coming out of totally fake injury with not the biggest fanfare. Where is the SmackDown champion Ronda Rousey? So it seems like we're going to build towards Raquel versus Ronda Rousey at Rumble. They did previous had pretty fun matches on SmackDown, so I do have my hopes. But this whole segment and the match felt pretty flat to me. Uh, good, not bad. Next, we see damage control on SmackDown. Why are they on SmackDown? I don't know. They don't know. And Bailey actually talks about that in her promo. But this segment is when it all clicked for me. Damage Control, they debut on SummerSlam making a huge splash, but they are not here to control their damage. In reality, Damage Control is here to uplift everyone except for themselves, but people like Bianca Belair, returning Becky Lynch, and in this SmackDown, they were a mere tool to make returning Tegan Knox look good. Yes, Damage Control is Triple H's tool this entire time. They're just a tool to make everyone else look good. Anyway, Crazy Liv Morgan interrupts Bailey and then charges into the ring to fight all of them all at once. And Tegan Knox with the rainbow hair returns, saving Liv Morgan and hits the shiniest wizard on Bailey. First of all, welcome back, Tegan. It's always good to see any women get their second or third chance with WWE. That said, I am worried. I am really worried because because at this point, we had like 30 returns since Triple H took over. These returns are losing its impact. And December holiday season to Rumble to Road to WrestleMania is generally a rough time to get the spotlight unless you're in that main championship storyline. I don't think Tegan ever got to connect with the fans that much in her previous runs. Her characters have been rather bland with the mix of I've been injured really badly sympathy and the very confusing Lady Kane character mixed with the endless Marvel superhero homage. Although her wild new hair could be a sign of a newer, more interesting Tegan Knox, but remember, hair color isn't a personality, so creative team better give her something interesting to work with. Just please, please, please don't do a random pairing with Liv. Liv is finally enjoying her single life after all these years. Let her stay as a single star, please. We also saw an exciting promo showing the newly packaged Lacey Evans. Lacey Evans back to basics. I am really excited about it, actually. Yes, her nasty lady gimmick was awesome. We all loved it. She's great at camp. But I think there's tremendous potential as her just being the baddest US Marine veteran. And to be honest, her last iteration was not badass at all. She just became kind of a weird oversharing TED talker with the weird catchphrase to eventually being a hater. So scrap all that and let's build from the basics. She also did look weirdly like Michelle McCool in this promo. She's loving life. That is this week's Women's Wrestling Recap. It's already December and we have Women's Wrestling Fan Awards 2022 video coming up this week. So get ready for that. Also, Candice Michelle on every will be up in January with everything going on in December. She looks amazing with her famous bodysuit, by the way, so make sure to subscribe and hit that notification button for Candice Michelle top five video. And you can find me and photo of my beautiful Emmy trophy on Instagram at DSHIN and ring the bell DS on Twitter. And I'll see you next time. Bye!